seven CU two thousand fourteen zero five. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is also a conditional use request. Um, it is from Phi Sigma Kappa fraternity, requesting approval for a fraternity house, also no key zoning. This property is a little over a half acre in size. Um, it is at four ten Bay Tree Road. Um, as you look at the zoning map on the screen and in your packet, it is along the north side of Bay Tree. Uh, three lots down from the Zelly Drive intersection. It is also directly across the street from the BSU PE complex. Um, property has previously been occupied by a fraternity house for many years. Um, that is before the city's change in regulations. And in some regard, the property has been, I guess, somewhat victimized by that. Um, prior to the LDR, which was adopted five years ago, uh, fraternity houses were allowed as a matter of right in OP zoning. The only requirement was that they be across the street from the BSU campus. That is how the previous fraternity got here. Um, it existed for a long time. They moved out last summer. Um, but it also means that five years ago when the regulations changed, that former fraternity became a legal non-conforming use, which means it was grandfathered in. Uh, once a non-conforming use leaves for six months, it cannot return without going through the proper approval processes. So since the property has been vacant from a fraternity house for more than six months, the new fraternity house that is going to locate here meets the conditional use. The property is already set up as a fraternity in terms of its facility and size and parking. Um, the new one is simply wanting to move in. It's fairly limited in size. Um, is, there's an eligibility map, which I'm not sure may to the power. This is one of the requirements in the LDR. The areas that are highlighted in pink are BHU properties. The areas highlighted in yellow on that map are eligible properties for fraternity. Uh, some of you may recall we went through some amendments a couple years ago to change this map, um, rearrange some of those areas. This property is within the green, which means that is good. Um, and ideally, it's across from the main campus, the athletic part of the campus, and it is moving in with a fraternity that exists on one side and a Catholic student center that exists on the other. So in terms of fraternity use, it is truly an ideal location. With that, staff has found it consistent with our conditional use review criteria and our comprehensive plan, and we're recommending approval with the three conditions that you see on the cover page. First one, conditional use approval shall be granted for a fraternal organization for the existing building only. Any expansions to the building or major changes to the site will require re-review of the conditional use. The property shall maintain compliance with the provisions of the city's residential parking overlays. This is within that northwestern quadrant of the city where we have special rules about parking in the front yards. Number two, the existing dense vegetation, uh, vegetative buffer and fence shall be maintained along the property's northern property line. Number three, conditional use approval shall expire after two years if the facility is not occupied and operating by that date. Um, applicants I saw earlier, I think they are still here and may be available to answer some questions that you may have, but I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have for staff. Any questions for staff? I just have one clarification, Matt. You mentioned that the current parking uh, configuration meets the current it, it does. They are required to have parking on an approved surface. Um, the site, there is a very uh, rudimentary site plan in your packet um, that shows the driveway. Um, I think it has been to the east side of the driveway is an approved parking area that was put in by the previous fraternity, it's sort of a compacted gravel area. Um, that's where the parking is, a long driveway with parking to the side. There's also the possibility of additional parking in the back. There's actually a carport back there, and the driveway can loop around. Um, the residential parking area district does not restrict parking in the backyard. It only has rules about the front yard. You cannot have more than five vehicles. You've got to be on the approved service. Um, and that's something we've been talking with the applicants about. Um, a couple times I've been by there, there have been cars in the grass area of the front yard. That is a no-no under the LDR. I think they understand that and can keep to areas. They have the ability to go through a, a review process with the engineering department to either expand or modify that parking in the front yard, which they can do at any time. Um, there may be some maintenance that needs to be done on that driveway. 
but those are all things that can happen when they're ready. All right, any other questions for the staff? There being none, um, I will now take anybody who wants to speak in favor of this application. My name is Jordan Lee. I'm the president of Faisal and Capital Attorney. I just want to thank you guys for letting me be here today and giving us this opportunity to set up our house and on Bay Tree Ring. Uh, if any questions, Any questions for the speaker? I would thank you for coming. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? Bring none. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition of this request? Discussion is now open amongst the commissioners. The bring none, I will now take a motion from the commissioners. I'm making a motion to um, recommend approval of the, the case as presented with the three uh, recommended conditions as listed by staff. All right, yeah, we have a motion to approve the recommendation with the conditions. Second. And a second. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor of this request, please indicate by raising your right hand. All right, the motion passes unanimously. <coughs> Staff, 